lives will be changed by the hearing of your word. God, I thank you right now. I meet behind you, God. You know the heart of your servant. God, now show yourself mightily in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God a shout. Shadrach, Meshach, 
And the men will go, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come here. I want to preach from the topic. Look. You may be seated. Look. Many times, many times we we get so caught up in our emotions and caught up in our circumstances that we forget to we forget to bless God and keep his stance. We forget that he's still holy. We forget that he's still yet in charge. And, and so sometimes we allow our situations to cause us to be blind by the fact that God is still yet in control. Amen. In our world today, we are living in a generation where we operate in our emotions and not based on the facts. We operate so much so in our emotions that we go to war based on what we thought was going on, what we felt in response without really uh, uh, researching all of the evidence. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we, we pick candidates based off of what appeals to our heart without truly researching what they really stand about. Uh, we, we, we choose churches based on how well the music is played and the emotion, the emotional connection to what we are going through at that time we choose because it felt good. In this story, the story about the three Hebrew boys, it basically uh, came down to uh, Nebuchadnezzar was the king and he wanted to uh, be idolized as the king. He allowed people to get in his ear to take him out of the position in which he was and make him greater or bigger than what he truly is. This is what happens to a lot of the leaders uh, that we have in our lives because somebody told them that they could do it and they begin mm -hmm. to believe and smell themselves. Mm -hmm. My granny used to always say, boy, don't smell yourself too bad. Mm -hmm. Because see, when you begin to look at yourself greater than what you really are, you begin to take yourself out of position. Yes, uh -huh. And so what happened was that he allowed his advisors to put, put in their head because they were really jealous of Meshach and, 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 and his brothers uh, Shadrach and Abednego and, 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 and we always like to say in a bad Negro, amen. Because they, they were jealous of these foreigners that had the favor of God. They set up a system knowing that they would not falter in their belief. They set up a system to set them up for failure. And so the king believed in the king said yes I should be idolized build the statue and every time they play the music I want you to worship me every time they mention your name I want you to worship me every time I show up to church I want you to work every time I come on my job I want you to make me feel like I'm the boss and make me feel like I'm the best every time I come in the house I need everybody to run and say hello and how you doing uh -huh. Nebuchadnezzar wanted to feel that he was empowered because he didn't feel it in himself. Jesus. We have begun to set a society of people who are insecure with their own selves into a position that demands security. You cannot be in a leadership position and be a leader. You cannot be a head of a household if you are not operating in a system of secure confidence. But if you are operating in a, situ a situation of insecure self-fear, uh, uh, then you're going to fall every time. Fear is the root. Yes, it is. Why depression is running rapid mm -hmm. is because people fear to live. To feel. They want to check out. They don't want to deal with their emotion. And so they want to, to 
just act like they're losing their minds and, and check out of the emotion instead of dealing with the situation that caused the fear in the first place. Fear will cause anger. We have a society of youth that are sitting angry and they're, they're mad because of something that happened in their past and no one wants to hear what's going on in their lives and they discounted their feelings for so long so now they're walking around mad for no apparent fear. Fear will cause people to make decisions about your destiny that has nothing to do with the things that you've done positive, but because they can't feel you and can't be like you, they're going to come after you and try to take you out. Fear right. is the root right. that causes negative things to happen. Yes. Fear is what attacks families. Mm -hmm. Because of fear of some situation, family split. Because of the fear of situation, parents mm -hmm. disconnect from the children. Mm -hmm. Because of fear. We have an economy because of fear. Because the economy changes the fear. The job will cut you out because of fear. But when we begin to operate in the spirit of God, when we begin to stand knowing our faith cannot waver, I have confidence in who I am. These three Hebrew boys had came to the king, and the king had told them that I need you to, I need you to worship. I need you to, I need you to look at this statue and worship this statue. When they begin to play in, 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 in harmony, when the symphony begins to string up and strike up the music, the accord, I need you to pray and worship like everybody else. And this is what I loved about these boys, and this is why I, I think that we need to get back to uh, having that mentality of the Hebrew walk is because when no matter what the, is popular, no matter what is on TV, no matter what uh, the scandal is showing, you are still standing on the firm belief of what God had told you. They said, no, I'm sorry, King. Now, I understand that you need this to feel good about yourself, but I cannot go against what my Lord has told me. I can't go against what I believe. Amen. When you learn to stand on your own two feet, when you learn to stand against oppression, when you learn to stand against when all chips are against you and just say, no matter what happens to me, I still stand on what I believe. Yes. Stand, stand, stand. This is the thing. He thought, well, <laughs> since you're not going to do what I asked you to do, mm -hmm. I'm just going to get upset. <laughs> Because the Bible says that he was so upset that his face was distorted. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had somebody just get so mad that when they look at you, they look like the devil in him? <laughs> and this is what I want you to understand is that no matter what he did, no matter what he said, those three Hebrew boys' faith mm -hmm. was never changed. That's right. As a matter of fact, there's a, there's 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 there's, there's a uh, uh, um, uh, some scripts, some holy scripts that you don't see in your body. They're called the apocryphers, mm -hmm. and what they are is there are are parallel scripts. They're supporting documents to what we read as the Holy Bible, and then these things it, it gives an account that 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 little pieces, little things that evidence it says in in the apocrypha that, that, that the three Hebrew boys, when they were going into the fire, they wasn't crying, they weren't pleading, they weren't quiet, they began to go singing hymns to God. They had an attitude of worship in the midst of the destruction. They said, I'm not worried about the fire, I'm going to go ahead and just worship God. See, when you are going through hell in your life, when you destruction, when you're going through loss, it's important that you learn how to worship God, even in the midst of your pain. You gotta begin to learn how to shout to God. I don't care how bad it's getting. Praise be to the Lord. I don't, I don't care how much you're talking to me, but Lord, I love you. I, I honor you, God. I don't care if you don't like me. I'm gonna keep singing to God no matter what the people said that they sung songs to God. When they sung the song to God, 
It provokes something in the atmosphere. So you have to learn how to call for help. See, a lot of us ain't getting the help that we need because we're not dialing the right number. We're not using the right things to get what we need. See, you get more than just say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I can't do this no more. Lord, do something with these people. See, when you learn to have the right attitude and call and learn how to ask, see, I learned some things. My grandfather raised me as the man in my life because my father failed to do so. And so my grandfather would take me and learn and, and learn and teach me how to talk and teach me how to walk as a man. He, he would take me to fine restaurants and teach me etiquette. He would teach me how to answer the phone. See, back in the day, when you answer the phone, see, y'all don't know this, the young ones, y'all just go, hello? Uh, but when you answer the phone, you had to announce where you was calling. Hello, this is the Chapman residence. Can I help you? Who do you need to speak to? There was a perfect etiquette that you had to have. No matter how mad you were, you better pick up that phone and act like you got some sense. See, I, I learned some stuff uh, from the olden days that no matter how bad it gets, Elder, you got to learn how to stand on your feet and still praise God. I, I learned something that you got to learn how to have a prayer in your life. You got to learn how to say, thank you, Lord. You got to learn how to say hallelujah when you ain't got nothing else to say. See, all you got to do is call up on the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that when the boys went into the fire, that watch this, the ones that put them there burned up and died. And it doesn't say that they died or they burned up, but the ones that put them there. Stop being afraid of people who try to put you in the fire. Let them put you in the fire. Let them drag your name in the mud. Let them talk about you. Let them rise up about you. Let them do whatever they want to you because the problem is, is the Bible said, touch not my anointing to do my prophet. No, huh? that means that anybody that raise a voice up against you, if they put their your position. Yes. What you wore identified who you was. Uh, when you were somebody, they would put you in clothing that represent your status of life. Yes. That's why that's why when they hung Jesus to the cross, they stripped him of yes. his garments because they did not want him to appear that they were hanging the king. Yes. yes. They wanted to strip and make them just like everybody else. And so this was curious. I was curious to why they did not strip the young men of their clothing and throw them in as prisoners and convicted felons. They put them in the fire in their positioning. Mm -hmm. yes. Their positioning was they were foreigners in a foreign land and they had a position in government they should not have got. Right. And because of their statue and their lives, they stood because they was with Daniel and they stood and learned from Daniel. They yeah. stood in the positioning and whenever they walked, they looked like they were who they was. Yes. Amen. Oh, I'm going somewhere. See, yeah. see, see, when you are calling yourself a Christian, you should look like a Christian. You should talk like a Christian. You, you, you should not be acting like you lost your mind. You should not have your flesh out there on display. You should not be ready to cuss everybody out because they looked at you wrong or, or cut you off when you was driving. You should act like a Christian all the time. Because when you are a Christian and they put you in a bad situation, they cannot strip you of your position. Amen. Amen. They threw them in there with all their clothes on. They threw them into the fire. They threw them into the fire. And then, and, 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 and the king looked. The Bible says that he looked. He yelled out to his advisors, look. Didn't we put three in there, tied up? Yes. Because not only do I see the three boys yes. walking freely, 
I see a wolf. Amen. Surely it wasn't somebody waiting in the fire. Mm -hmm. So how did the fourth person get into the fire? Yes. Oh, Pastor, let me tell you. I'm going to tell you how, how the fourth person get it. See, if I go back for a second, let me rewind for a second. I said that the boys went in singing unto God. Yes. They went in praising and worshiping yes. unto God. What that said is that I don't care what you do to me. I still know Lord can help me. Yes. Lord can lie. The Bible goes on to tell us that if two or three are gathered in his name, he will be in the midst. And so when the three boys got together and began to sing, I'm not singing, Lord, are they about to kill us, help us. It says they were singing joyful noise unto God. They was worshiping God, Lord, for who you are. If you don't do it for me, if you never buy me another thing, I love you. I will. If you don't send me someone to love me, I know that you love me. Lord, if you don't let me get another job, that you love me. If you don't buy me another pair of shoes, I know that you love me. See, we gotta quit putting conditions on God and say, if you if you buy me something, I love you. If you take care of me, I love you. That's the problem with our society now is that we want to put God in a box. God, I love you just because of what you used to do for me. I love you just because I know that you can do it even if you choose not to do it. God, I love you, and they praised Him, and because they praised Him, they came out because they praised. And they stood up and began to walk and have a party in the midst of the fire. See, we gotta learn to have a party in the midst of our dead time. We gotta have a party in the midst of our hurt. We gotta have a party in the midst of when people don't wanna be with you. Learn how to have a party all by yourself. We gotta get from this woe is me stuff. Stop allowing the devil to chase your dreams away. And determine the quality of your life by what's going on in your life. You need to look at your life and determine the quality of your life by what God has done in your life. See, if God has never done nothing for you, then this message is really not about you because I don't know something wrong with you and your God. But I just want to talk to some somebody that know what it is and experience what God has done in their life. Somebody that know that it had not been for God, I'd still be on that drug today. Had not been for the Lord, I would have died in that crash today. Had not been for the Lord, I would not have made it now. If it had not been. See, I don't want to talk to some people who had know that I, no matter what happened in my life, God took care of it. Yes, 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 yes. He showed up in the fire. Mm -hmm. My gosh. One was sitting and simply asked why, why he didn't show up before. Mm -hmm. And I want you to understand this. God can't do nothing for you until you're going through some stuff to burn some things off of you. Amen. Oh, okay, Holy Ghost. Amen. A lot of us ain't getting what we need because we got to get some folks burnt off of us. <laughs> we got people bound and tied and tying us up. Yes. We're letting folks tie it. Let them go. Let them see the exit. Don't block it no more. And let them fall off and burn off. God is now putting folks in positions where you ain't got to say a word. They just going to burn up regardless. They just going to fall out regardless because they thought they had you. They thought they could tie you up. They thought that they could keep you from your blessing. They thought that they could stiffen your anointing. They thought they could change your whole uh, disposition. But God decided that that's not going to be the case. God decided that he was going to burn some stuff off of you and let you survive the fire. See, I just want to know, do I have any fire party church people in my house? Do I have any people that can walk amongst the fire that no matter what happens, it can get hot, baby, but I'll be all right because the fire purifies yes, sir. their walk. Amen. How do you know, Pastor, that it were purified? Because when it came out, when it came out, now watch this, the king had to call him out. that ordered you in that position <laughs> it's going to be that very person God going to make call you out. Amen. 
It didn't say that they were fighting and kicking on the door of the furnace to get out on their own. Yes. They was having such a good time in their problems that they got called out from the person who called the problem. My Lord. Somebody was on their job going through hell in their life and that person put you in that problem and until you learn how to smile and have a good time in that problem, they gonna keep you there. But when you having too much of a good time, they gonna call you out of that thing. See, there was, I love it. Back in the days, they had a show called uh, Buried with Children. Mm. Yeah. And Al and, and Peg. And, 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 and no matter how happy Al would get, Peg would always try to do something to take his happiness yes. away. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she will put him in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. and, and, and no matter what the situation was, I will always find a happiness and enjoyment in this situation. And then she'll get mad and pull him out of. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all need to get happy in the hell that you're in right now. You should just go home and just start laughing like you're crazy, like you lost your mind. Just look at folks That's when they're right. cussing and looking and yelling at you. Just begin to smile and just begin to get, get happy about it and watch they pull you out. Yes. Because there's something about when you come out the fire. See, the Bible says when it came out, not one thing was burnt off of them. They did not even smell like smoke. They didn't look like they had gone through a thing. And, and they came out. And not only did they come out, but God put them in a position uh, to where the king had to recognize the truth in right. them. He ordered, by their experience that he saw, he ordered that everybody worship the God he these boys served. And so when you learn how to show up with your Christian faith and walk with God on your side, it will cause the world to take notice and begin to worship like you worship. You want to change the, 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 the effect in your household? Change your level of worship in your household. You want to change something, get some of them uh, sinners out of your household? Go ahead, put on some gospel music. Put on some holy roller. Music. Go ahead and walk around the house praying to God, anoint every area of that house, and watch the devil flee. See, you gotta learn how to get folk off of you. You gotta learn how to believe in God, no matter what the fire is. Yeah, no matter what. Amen. No matter what the fire is, the devil is going to put his best against you. Yes, yes. So the king had ordered his strongest men. Not that the three Hebrew boys were strong. Mm -hmm. They, they never did it in, 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 in the Bible, the scripts, and even in the Apocrypha didn't say that they fought. They, it actually says that they surrendered. Because they knew there's nothing that you can do to me. Yes. That my God can't protect me. Amen. And you gotta have that attitude. There's nothing that you can do to me. That God can't heal me from. Right. You broke my heart. God gonna give me a new heart. Amen. Broke my spirit. Mm -hmm. So God can give me a new spirit. Amen. You made me lose some stuff. God doubled it. Amen. Stop getting so tied up on stuff mm -hmm. and people. Mm -hmm. And begin to know who God is for Amen. yourself. That in the midst of your fire, he's going to show up Amen. if you got the right party going on. Mm -hmm. See, one day you learn by God, and I'm going to tell you, people, you can debate this with me if you want to, and we can do it, but I'll show you in the Bible. But it says that Jesus loved artists. <laughs> yeah. Oh, y'all didn't know that. Y'all thought that Jesus was born in Holy Roller. Jesus loved so much so that when the party ran out of wine, Mm. He made some more. He made you. <laughs> because back in those days, and, and, and even now today, you know, once the alcohol don't act like y'all ain't so holy, y'all just act like y'all so holy. You know, back in the day when they said, like, there's no more, the party ended and y'all went home. <laughs> 
Amen. 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 Back in the day, they didn't, they didn't make it up. Y'all didn't, didn't come up with that. It was back in the day, back in the biblical times, back in, even before. That any time the celebration, the celebrations will go until there's no more food and there's no more wine. Oh, that was key. That's when the feast stopped. That was key. We put time limits on. See, I don't know about y'all, but back in the day, I would celebrate my birthday from March 1st to March 31st. My birthday was on March 31st. Right. But I celebrated from March 1st to March 31st. All it. Because I had all year long to prepare to have enough alcohol to last 31 days worth of partying. Food to last 31 days worth of partying. Y'all acting so holy. Y'all need to stop it. <laughs> Don't worry, we're going to edit that part out. <laughs> Seriously, let me close and let me end by saying this. If you want to learn how to survive, Amen. if you want to learn how to not allow the fire to keep burning you up, you have to make up your mind that no matter what it looks like, I'm going to go into it praising as if I've already came out of it. Amen. Amen. God wants to see you believe that you are a winner. Amen. And that you will win when you go into the fight knowing that it's already done. Mm -hmm. You have a level of confidence. I'm not scared. I'm not going to die there. So let me go ahead and have my party and celebrate my coming out before the coming out. Amen. Like I said, my birthday was on the 30th. Well, it is on the 31st of March. Mm -hmm. But I partied at the beginning mm -hmm. of March as if I've already made it to the end of March. Y'all right, wow. go ahead and give God a hand clap. Of
honest with you, it will be revealed to them in the first place. Yes, yes. Some of you have received prayer. Some of you have hit me on social media past I need prayer. And I don't sit there and ask you, well, what's going on? I just pray, Lord, your will be done. So you don't have to give your long list of what's going on. But get connected with somebody to pray, because the Bible says when two or three are gathered, he's in a mess. Amen. And so if you're needing to be saved, if you want to be saved, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, put him at the end of your life. If you're wanting to be a part of a church family that's going to love you in spite of yourself. Mm -hmm. And then if you're needing connection and prayer, today is your day. Yes. Do not let the moment pass. And as we 
we all put the bread in front of us, which is the Lord's body, which was broken for us. The Lord said, eat ye all this. And once again, it was his blood, the atoning blood of Calvary, that has given us eternal life. As we release the lower part, this juice represents the Lord's blood. And you think of this juice that we're drinking, it paid for our sins. It was the atoning blood. And he said, drink ye all of it. At this point, we consider ourselves dismissed, but let us go our ways, praying and rejoicing in the Lord. Everybody say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.